We must recognize that we as a nation are at a pivotal moment in history. When I look at climate change, uh, it's in the category of sources of conflict around the world and things we'd have to respond to. We have to respond militarily very often to the effects of globally of climate change. Those who say that now is not the time to act fail to recognize the gravity and the urgency of our energy and climate change challenges. America's top generals are saying it's time to protect the country from the ultimate enemy, the climate crisis. The Pentagon has released a report declaring the changing climate a national security threat. The military has been experiencing the effects of climate change on the front lines for years. Climate change acts as a threat multiplier, making unstable situations across the world even worse. If you take a look at Syria as an example, uh -huh. most don't remember what caused the Syria conflict to start. It started because of a 10-year drought and folks having to move from their family farms into cities where they then were not getting any support and therefore a civil war began. It's making logistics harder, endangering troops on the ground. Worsening weather over the Mediterranean has delayed vital supply shipments, reinforcements, and rescue operations between Europe and Africa. And the Department of Defense can't use live ammunition anymore in the West during droughts because they could start a wildfire. Key military bases are also being battered by rising seas. We share bases of pretty much waterfront property yep. all over the world, so if the ocean's gonna rise, we're gonna be impacted everywhere. Langley Eustis Base in Virginia has seen 14 inches of sea level rise, causing flooding to be more severe. So everything we look at in terms of our infrastructure, we have to look at through the lens of how would I build and design infrastructure that would support changes in climate. The more time and effort the military has to spend on climate change, the less it has to combat other threats. We're fighting firefighters in California and using our C-130s to help fight those. We did the the floods here are the hurricanes both in Texas as well as, as uh, Florida and as the ones came up the east coast affecting bases like Langley. When Hurricane Michael blasted through Tyndall Air Force Base with 150 mile per hour winds, it damaged Tyndall's F-22 fighter jets, almost all of its buildings, and required the relocation of 11,000 personnel. The total repair cost is $4.7 billion. In fact, the Pentagon confirmed that almost all of the most important military bases in the U.S. will be vulnerable to recurring disasters like drought and flooding. This threat to preparedness is of major concern as a new front opens in the Arctic. As Arctic ice melts, it's creating a new military front in America's north. This new ocean is mission critical to the protection of the United States and is escalating tensions between the U.S. and Russia. The geography is no longer the buffer that it, that it once was. We, for decades, uh, actually used the, the sea as a moat and, and really didn't have to worry from the threats directly coming against the home ends from the sea. That has fundamentally changed. Russia is extending its Arctic reach with more than a dozen new airfields, 16 deep water ports, and weaponized icebreakers. A lot of them. The U.S. military is the world's single largest user of oil, but high-ranking officials have been sounding the alarm about climate change for over a decade. In 2007, a dozen of the nation's most respected retired admirals and generals warned that without a major policy shift, climate change could cause problems that exceed government's ability to cope. But while the White House ignores the reality of climate change, the U.S. military is planning for it as a serious problem. Share this video if you think we should be listening to the people whose job it is to protect us.